Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's play it forward. These are real people with real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 600 is with Gary and Shannon Siraj from Texas Gator Savers. Hey, good morning, Arrow. Good morning, Arrow. Oh, I love that energy, you guys. I love yours, too. <laughs> I got to tell you, I have been a fan of Earth X TV from the very beginning. Correct me if I'm wrong. This started because of Earth Day, did it not? And was it not on late night TV in the very, very beginning? And now it's grown into this beautiful piece of artwork? Oh, definitely. Earth X TV has just blossomed. And, and it's su- such about the environment and taking care of Earth. And we're, we're so excited to be a part of it. Well, I like what you're doing with the Gators in Texas. And, and at the same time, I'm also so afraid because I saw what happened to the water buffalo when they snuck them down there into South America. But you guys are doing it the right way. Yeah, absolutely. you got to remember, these are alligators that are in people's pools or ponds or yards. The problem is... People have just moved so close to the alligator's habitat that the alligator has nowhere to go. So we want to give an alligator a good place to go. Now, Gary and Shannon, I, I, I fear that what you're talking about, we're, we're moving in too close because I live in this forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina, and the deer are like my best friend. And I'm so afraid that the climate changes are going to bring those gators into this area. Yeah, well, it's, it's definitely possible. I mean, they are moving. Uh, they're moving more you know, more westerly and more more northerly. So they are in, they are being found in places now that they never have been found before. When you go into an area where an alligator has been spotted, I mean, do you become horse whisperers in the way of alligator whispering? <laughs> I would say Gary's the alligator whisperer. <laughs> well, uh, no, I mean, absolutely. When you when you care about these dinosaurs as much as we do, you learn their movements. I mean, you you learn the, immediately when you when you're looking at an alligator. You can tell what they're thinking. Are they trying to get away from you? Are they trying to come to eat? When you've done it as long as we have, you you know the animal. I am so glad that you brought up dinosaur because I do that with a lot of people, and they look at me kind of strange. But, man, but the, the, but the thing about it is it's because of shows like yours, Gary and Shannon, that the younger kids from three up are watching this, and they're going, dinosaur, dinosaur. They get it, and you're speaking it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is exactly right. And, and think about this. In over 300 million years, the core body of this animal has not changed. It's the same animal that it's been all these years. Why, why, is, why has there never been you know, any, any type of evolution? I mean, because I, I would think that they've changed in some way or shape. As far as the biology of this animal, it has not. What? You think about it. It has survived droughts. It has survived floods. It has survived ice ages. These animals are incredible, man. What do you do in those situations like we have here in the Carolinas, especially down there in Charleston? And that is when it's egg season, oh, do not go near that gator. How do you guys deal with that? Well, we tell you to stay away from them. If you (laughs) encounter one of these alligators, uh, you really just, you want to stay away from them. And, and, you know, they they say zigzag or climb a tree uh, to get away from this alligator. Uh, Uh. Gary's got the best way to get away from the alligator. The only way to get away from an alligator when it's chasing you and your wife is to trip your wife. <laughs> you still got to be students, don't you? Because, I mean, even though we've, we've talked about there haven't been really that many changes or no changes at all, but you've still got to be a student of the dinosaur, do you not? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's where this whole thing originated from. You look, look through the, the evolution of, of three to four, 400 million years, you're going to find... The alligator is right there with it all, right in the middle of everything. Where do you replant an alligator? We do get permission from Texas Parks and Wildlife to release a certain amount of alligators into the wild. However, the problem is if the alligator has been hand-fed by a human, even Mm. one time, Mm. they're going to come back to that spot. And that that is through research been been proven. So what we have, we have opened up a sanctuary here just outside of Beaumont called Gator Country. And we're able to bring them live and let them live out their life here in this sanctuary. I would sit in front of them for hours just studying them because I know they're constantly thinking about something. Yeah, doesn't it look that way? They've got the biggest smile, too, all the time. (laughs) An alligator's always smiling back at you. They're They're really magical. (laughs) And those eyes. Oh, my God. I love looking into a gator's eyes. And you know they have three sets of eyelids, right? No, I did not know that part. They do. They have one that opens up like mine and yours. The second one is uh, acts like goggles underwater. It's called a nictating membrane. And the third one is a, it's a little bony os- osteoderm. They can close their whole eyelid 
to protect our eye if needed. Is that because from the sun and stuff, especially since the temperatures are, are gaining in strength right now? More so is protection of the eye, more so than anything. Yeah, because they're so close to the earth. I mean, I mean, even through Native American spirituality, the gator and, and snakes are so big on the totem pole because they are cuddling up to Mother Earth. They do. They use every bit of it. You think about this. During a drought, an alligator will have the only water around. What they'll do is they'll go round and round and round and make a hole, and then that hole will sustain life. It will sustain fish, snakes, birds, you name it, that alligator causes that drought. I mean, what I mean is they're the ones that let everybody survive. But I really am afraid of next year. You have got to be super busy in trying to prepare for what could be the inevitable. Well, we saw that this year, and, and we had a we had a really one. This was one of the biggest droughts we've had in Southeast Texas yeah. in quite some time. And what we found is we, we saw how the alligators moved and how the alligators found water. Uh, our nuisance alligator calls went went up this year by about 15 percent because of this drought so no question the more the drought the more we've got to catch nuisance alligators because they're they're getting out of their habitat looking for more water okay let me ask you this thing gary what what because i've read a lot of stories about texas getting their butt beat because of the cold too where are these gators going in the winter time this is where they're they're fascinating what happens is when the water temperature gets to 68 degrees alligators will stop feeding oh. that's the first step of what we'll call a hibernation or a brumation, however, whichever way you like to look at that. What happens next is the alligator will start to tunnel into the banks of the water, and they will dig a they will dig a small tunnel, leaving an air pocket in there. Four or five alligators may get in there together, and they'll huddle together, and they will survive through that. An alligator can lower their heart rate down to three beats per minute during excessive cold. Well, I'm I, man, this this is news to me because I've never seen an alligator being part of a community. So in the winter time, they really build a, a team together then. They will, and you'll notice when the sun does come up, those alligators will come out of that that burrow, <laughs> and they will lay in the sun, and they will they will gather heat on their osteoderms, which are those bony platelets on the back. Yep. They'll gather that heat, and at night when the sun goes down, they'll all get back in there, and, and they will slowly release that heat from those osteoderms keep him warmth. Why don't we want to learn more about this? I mean, that first of all, for Earth X TV to have this is just spectacular. But we need to we need to embrace more wildlife in this nation. We do, and, and, and you can imagine that the through our eyes, what we see with animals, yeah. can you imagine if we could look at it through their eyes? <laughs> I don't know if they'd like what they see. I don't think they'd like it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so where can people go to find out more about you guys? Because, man, you, I mean, you, you should be on the front of every T-shirt in this country. You guys are marketing. You'll be able to view our uh, TV show on earth x tv through direct tv yep. att uverse spectrum and fubo yep yep see and that's that's how i found you all those years ago it, it was it was on really super late night tv and it's like oh my god i got to talk to these guys yeah no doubt there's there's just so much to learn and and even in even in at my level with the alligators there's still still so much to learn every day absolutely please come back to this show anytime in the future the door is always going to be open for you Oh, thank you so much. Well, you guys be brilliant today, okay? You too. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Have a wonderful day.